Hello, my name is Gulam Bahadur, consultant clinical endologist. Today we are going to talk about single and or double intrauterine insemination, new clinical facts uh, for successful outcomes. Now the question for me to you is, would you do single or double IUI? Would you do double IUI? And whilst you're thinking about it, let me just uh, try and reflect on what has gone on historically. Uh, timing is has been an enigma within our field at many levels. Timing of uh, uh, stimulation, timing of trigger, timing of um, how long you're going to keep the sperm for. And this is not the timing that I'm going to talk about. Today I'm going to talk about if you were to insert, if in principle, you were to inseminate more times, would you get more pregnancies? And the position is that the old, old position was that the Cochrane Review said that um, they relied on three studies only with about 380 patients. And they said there was no statistical difference in performing, in, in performing a double insemination. The insemination can be performed at either 18 hours, 24 hours, right up to 36 to 40 hours. And that's the kind of uh, issues that we're dealing with in double insemination. But when I looked into the Cochrane Review itself, and you will see, I'll show you the chart uh, very soon, is that they actually included five studies. And in the five studies that they were included, uh, which involved 1,785 women, what they concluded there was that there was a significant effect uh, of using double insemination and uh, the odds ratio was 1.8. Isn't that amazing? So all what you have uh, uh, put in your brains for so long locked away that it doesn't work is actually working. And so here is the chart that you'll see the odds ratio that it is significant. Now, just to uh, tell you some newer studies that have come in, that, and, I'll, and you'll see this also on the chart, it's a double insemination and single insemination. For double, you have 14 point, now these are various studies, there are, uh, I've listed four or five studies, there are four studies there. The first one is 14.9% per cycle versus 11.4%. Okay, that's not significant in that study. Then the next study, there was a two-fold increase using double insemination over single insemination with an odds ratio of 2.0. The next study shows it 19.5% per cycle to 12.9% per cycle, and that is significant. And then we've got 19.87% per cycle versus 11.6% per cycle. And then if they teased out some of the factors, you'll find that with male factor, it was very significant at 24.9% per cycle versus 11.3% per cycle. So the emerging theme is that yes, double insemination is beneficial to your patient. And if we look deeper into it, male factor was quite, uh, it was beneficial for male factor. And also it was beneficial for gonadotrophin induced cycles. So those are the two categories um, where <coughs> it has become very important now. And perhaps you should begin considering uh, performing double insemination. Um, uh, given that we classify so many of our cases, at least half of our cases are unexplained infertility. Of course, there'll be some weaknesses uh, in some of the Cochrane Review studies that were included because of <coughs> certain weaknesses and heterogeneity of uh, the subject inclusion. But in my own experience, well, I have found that uh, Monday, the inseminations that we performed on a Monday uh, led to so few uh, pregnancies. And I think we have to consider our position on uh, timing of insemination uh, quite, uh, quite carefully because we still have not get, got the timing down to fine art uh, in our field. Uh, so I may want to try and give you some ideas as to when should we begin doing double insemination 
and my own feeling is that perhaps uh, some cycles down the line maybe fourth cycle onwards in a six cycle package maybe we should perform uh, double insemination either 24 hours and 36 hours uh, but I know that the optimal timing might well be about 29 to 30 hours for for, uh, for achieving pregnancies. Uh, try it out on the over 37, 35 year old women for instance um, and uh, try it out on where the endometrial res uh, thickness might be less than eight millimeters. The whole point is do we want to optimize our pregnancy rates for IUI and I'd say why not? The Cochrane review actually says it is significant, so why not try it? And so the the last question will no doubt appear as go through your mind. What about costings? Of course, costing is a is a, is a is a factor. There will be a, a small additional cost. Be transparent to your patients, and tell them that there is a small additional charge to be included because of the additional. Uh, processing and, and whatever procedure that exists. Well, I do hope that you'll increase your pregnancy rates on IUI and uh, really take on board double insemination because it is a very serious subject now. Thank you. Uh, can I ask you a question, Gulam? Yes. Uh, there are reports that say that you should, if you do a double insemination, it will be 12 hours and 24 hours. Now, there's so many stuff that is going on double insemination. If you were to, if I decided I need to do a double insemination, then when should I do a double insemination? Yeah, I think uh, what the, the facts that are emerging is that it, it seems to work with gonadotrophin induced cycles and will male factor. And remember one of the, my earlier talks, I had introduced consecutive ejaculate concept. And I suspect that on a second day insemination, uh, the uh, semen sample might well be better with better progression. Now, in answer to your direct uh, to answer you directly, we're looking at twenty four hour insemination and a thirty six hour insemination. Twelve hours is far too early. Okay. Thank you.